graph the sine function. So y equals sine of x. Now x is going to be our angle, and this is going to be in radians. So that our x-axis is dimensionless, and so our y-axis will just be the dimensionless values, which are the outputs. So in radians, let's set up some ordered pairs. I'm just going to grab some random values uh, starting from zero. Maybe I'll pick everything from the first quadrant of the unit circle. So pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and then top of the circle, pi over two. Okay, and then I'll grab some other points just from around the unit circle. So let's do maybe like two pi over three, and then pi. Maybe 5 pi over 4, and then 3 pi over 2. Something in the fourth quadrant, let's do maybe 11 pi over 6, and then 2 pi. So this will be one revolution of our unit circle. Remember that on the unit circle, the y coordinate is the sine value. So in the first quadrant, let me just grab all those y coordinates. So at 0, we get 0. Pi over 6, we get 1 half. Pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. At the top of the circle, sine of pi over 2 is 1. At 2 pi over 3, the y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. At pi, we get 0. 5 pi over 4, we get negative square root of 2 over 2. Bottom of the circle, sine is negative 1. Okay, 11 pi over 6, negative 1 half. And then back around where we started, we would get 0. Okay, so these are just some ordered pairs that we can plot. Since I'm starting at 0, let me start my x-axis at 0. Okay, so then my y-axis will just start on the far left. Okay, so I started at 0, and then I ended at 2 pi. So make sure you maintain a consistent scale. So if this is 2 pi, then half of that will be pi. Between 0 and pi, half of that would be a half of pi. Between 1 and 2 pi, half of that would be 3 halves pi. Let's mark out the quarters. So then between 0 and a half of pi, we would have a quarter of a pi. And three quarters of a pi, five quarters of a pi, seven quarters of a pi. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to maintain a consistent scale here. Let me get my y-axis. If we look at the y-coordinates, the smallest one is negative one, the largest one is one, so I need to mark out one. Remember that pi is about 3.14. So if I divide this by 3, that's going to be about 1. So pi over 3, here's a quarter of a pi, so a third of a pi to the right of that. So this is about 1, pretty close. So I'm going to take that, move it to my y-axis to give me y. Okay, so now I have my spacing. Let me plot my points. So I had 0, 0, pi over 6, 1 half, pi over 6 is to the left of pi over 4, pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2 is about 0. 0.7, square root of 3 over 2 is about 0. 0.9, pi over 2 I got 1.
at pi or 2 pi over 3 we had about 0.9 oops I marked out the wrong one okay, so 2 pi over 3 about 0.9 at pi we got 0 at 5 pi over 4 about negative 0.7 3 pi over 2 negative 1 11 pi over 6, negative 1 half. And then at 2 pi, we get 0. Okay, so you can kind of see what's happening. It's going up, and then it comes back down, and then goes back up again. Okay, this was just one revolution of the circle. So this was considered to be one cycle of our sine function, which means that if we were to keep going around and around, this would keep going and going. So let me denote that with some dashes just to say that this keeps going. It doesn't stop where I have it. Okay, so a few things to note. First of all, the domain. We can put in anything we want because any output is possible. So this is all reals. The range is restricted between the top and bottom of the circle, so between negative 1 and 1. Okay, the other thing I want to point out is the pattern and what's happening at the top, bottom, left, right of the circle. So we had, let me circle them, so at 0 we had an x-intercept, at pi over 2 we had a max, that's the highest point there. At pi we had an x-intercept. At 3 pi over 2 we had a low point, so that's called the min, or minimum. And then at 2 pi we had an x-intercept. So the pattern that's emerging is that you'll start with an x-intercept. So you have an x-intercept. And then you go to a max. Back to an x-intercept. Then you go down to a min, and then you end basically where you started at an x-intercept. Okay, so this pattern will stay true for all the sine functions. Keep in mind that you might have some reflections that happen. But this is basically the pattern that's going to occur at the top, bottom, left, right of the circle. So because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's 5 of these, we're going to call these the 5 major points.